Let's go. Let's go, my peoples. What's up, Latrice? Can you hear me okay? Testing, testing, testing. Can you hear me out there? <laughs> Thank you. I got a little delay on my end. All right, so we're going to give us folks some time, then we'll get started. Who just joined? Let me know. Let me know you're out there. Ah, you silly Latrice. What's going on, Erica? All the way down in Georgia, I think. You silly Latrice, I just saw that. You can't hear me? Now the tree says she can hear me, Erica says she can't. Geronimo, what's going on, bro? So it's you, Erica, it's not me. Andre, Jamie, how's it going? Gonna get started in a few minutes. Jamila, what's going on? Andrew, my friend, thanks for joining. I told you I wasn't going to answer any more of your questions till you jumped on. Akisha, how are you? So I've had a couple of people tell me they can't hear anything in a I'm sorry, my connection is having some issues here. So I'm gonna just try to sit in my recliner. I'm sorry, I'm having some problems here with my connection. Who, who's still with me? I'm sorry about that.
Can you hear me? I don't even know who's out there. This thing is uh, giving me some problems here. Okay, everybody hear me? All right, thanks. Sorry about that. Marquisha, Lenitra. Okay, cool. Katila. Not sure if I understand your uh, phone and computer freeing. How? Okay, I see, I just see your message, Jamila. All right, so I'm going to just wait a couple more minutes and I'm going to get started. So I want to be respectful of your time. I'm sorry, this thing is uh, messing up big time. Deacon Hank, sorry, my signal keeps going in and out. Jasmine, fit two, thank you for joining. Sorry about all the technical problems here. We'll get it started in just one second. So let's just go ahead and get started because it's about almost 10 after. So the reason I wanted to uh, do this is I get a lot of questions from a lot of people regarding life insurance. And it's one of those things that most people have some familiarity with, but still cause a lot of confusion here and there. So I know a lot of people in here know me uh, personally through church, friends, relatives, but let me give you a formal semi-professional introduction uh, this life insurance is something that I've been licensed to do for about nine years now and uh, I have a degree in finance I'm also a certified financial planner so uh, life insurance is one of those things where it always comes up and really the reason like I said I wanted to do this is just to give you all an open forum to ask whatever questions you have and I will do my best to answer them. And if there's a question I can't answer, I will get back with you regarding it. So why is life insurance important? Statistically, if the numbers are right, 85% of people know that life insurance is important and would say that they should have it. But those same numbers say that 60% 
own life insurance. So think about it. 85% of people know they should have it, yet only 60% have it. And then out of that 60%, only about 30% of people actually have enough life insurance. So clearly there's a big gap and there's a lot of confusion out there. So um, I everything that I'll be telling you is really uh, just from a presentation uh, that I previously done. Thanks for joining in, Tina. Hope you're feeling well. And uh, I can talk all day, but really I want to give you the opportunity. So whoever wants to, whatever questions you have about life insurance, uh, go for it. And if I don't get anything, I'll just uh, continue to talk. So let's uh, talk about one thing for, for one is, you know, one of the foundations of life insurance is understanding uh, when and why you need it. And everybody's situation is going to be a little bit different. Some people, uh, it's because you have people depending on you. Some people buy life insurance for business purposes. Some people buy life insurance for, uh, you know, wealth management. Some people buy life insurance for retirement planning. Some people buy life insurance uh, strictly just leave something behind to their relatives. So uh, the thing about life insurance is that there is a uh, lot of different things out there. So I got a question from Lakeisha. It says single premium policy. So what variable? <laughs> I take it these are questions saying explain a different policy, but uh, giving me a, a, a full question as if we were talking. So I'll answer your question. So your question, Lakeisha, about single premium policy, uh, if I'm reading this right, are you saying that uh, you just make one payment and that's it? Because typically uh, single premium policies are some form of permanent life insurance. So typically what will happen is depending on the policy, some people will just take a lump sum of money and put it into a policy and there's a way that they can calculate it to where you won't have to make another uh, payment again but typically those are going to be permanent life insurance policies does that answer your question sorry about the delay here uh, Comments are slow getting back to me on my end. So, Tina, let me answer your question. And then, Erica, if you give me a little bit more on that question, I will do my best to answer it. So, yes, you can have uh, definitely multiple life insurance policies. Both my wife and I have multiple policies. Now, I will tell you that if you were to go out there and try to get another policy, it's only so much that the insurance companies are going to give you. So, for instance, if they consider that you only need a million dollars life insurance policy, just throwing that number out there and you already have that much, they're not going to give you additional insurance. But, yes, you can't have more than one. So, Jasmine says, I have the one that's opposite of term. What's that one called? So... Uh, contrary to popular belief, there are actually a bunch of different types of life insurance policies. Um, you can have a universal life, you can have variable universal life, you can have whole life. So basically your two types are going to be either permanent, temporary, or somewhere in between. But um, it could be any of those. I, I would have to know a little bit more about it. Okay, so uh, hopefully that answers your question. Tracy, Aubrey, thanks for joining in. Sister Madison, thanks for joining in. So, Erica, let me answer your question about how does the investment portion work on variable life policies. Uh, 
it works very similar to um, like a mutual fund account. Typically in variable life policies, you have two different uh, factors. You have the cost of insurance to keep your policy in place, and then there is a portion of the investment. The investment vehicle is going to be pretty much uh, mutual fund type of accounts. So it will fluctuate up and down. One of the things that you have to make sure with variable uh, life is that you understand the provisions in the policy because if it's not enough money in there, let's say you lose too much, uh, the policy could possibly lapse. And I say possibly because they are different terms. So you're pretty much investing that uh, money. So on a lot of variable policies, there is no guarantee on them. So let me know if that answers your question. Okay, so Lakeisha, let me answer your question, and then Andrea, I'll come to yours. So can, you, can I explain permanent policies? Sure. So permanent policies are policies that typically, as long as you make your premium, you will have them. Now, there are different types of premium or, excuse me, permanent life insurance policies. You have your whole life, which is typically going to be your more expensive policy. The way that one is, is that you can uh, buy whole life in different ways. So you can make a single premium. Some of them have 10, 20 pay, which means you pay 10 years, 20 years, and then the policy is paid up, or you can pay for the rest of your life. But the way that works is that as long as you make your premiums, if something happens to you, uh, the death benefit goes then to your beneficiaries. But with whole life, it does build this cash value. But the one thing you have to understand about the cash value portion is that that money can only be used while you are living. So let's say hypothetically you have a $100,000 policy and within it is 30000 cash value. Well, if you were to die, and let's say you never take the money out, the insurance company basically takes the 30000 whole life, and then they'll take 70000 from their accounts, combine it to the 100, and then give it to your beneficiaries. Now, if you were to take that money out of the policy, traditionally you are borrowing it. So if you take that 30000 out, and you die and never pay it back, there's interest charged on that, and basically your family will get the 100000 minus what you've taken out, and they will be left with seventy. Now, there's also different types of policies, um, like, uh, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank here, but you can do also uh, kind of a in-between there of term, uh, which is called universal life. Now, universal does have different aspects to it, but they do have universal policies out there that are permanent uh, that will last to your whole life or will last to your 90, but uh, they could go to 100. But with those policies, if they are structured right, you can get a permanent policy for the rest of your life a little cheaper than a whole life. The big difference with the universal life, again, is that uh, you have to make sure you understand what the lapse provisions are in it. And also, uh, you can bridge that gap and pay a little bit less than what you would pay with whole life, but you will not get as much cash value as you normally would get with an, a whole life policy. But the one thing to also mention about whole life is that that policy depending on how much it is you're really not going to build any cash value for years so um, be mindful of that so let me go to Andrea's question so your job offers you three times should you buy more um, the quick question is it depends on what the needs are of your family now the benefit of getting life insurance through work is that it's typically just based off your age and you don't have to go through medical screenings up until a certain point. But the limits on your work policy is that you can only get so much. And if you want 
or need additional life insurance, um, you do have to do a medical exam, which uh, may or may not be important to you. But one thing you also have to consider is that if you were to leave that job, they only give you 30 days to take that policy with you. And even if you take the policy with you, they may increase your premiums every few years after you leave that job. So you uh, want to sit down with a insurance professional and have your overall uh, needs assessed. And then if you need additional life insurance, sometimes it may just be better off to buy your own policy. That way you own it so nobody can take it away from you unless you don't pay. And also with that policy, what can happen is uh, after a while, um, you may not need life insurance. You may need more. You may need less and you may be able to adjust it in between. So I hope that uh, answers your question. The only time I would say it's almost always makes more sense to only do work is if you have medical conditions that will prevent you from getting life insurance. But you can always sit down with an agent. And one of the things that, you know, people like myself do is if I know I have a client who maybe has some medical issues, I will shop it out and go to different companies to see if they will take the policy. Because what you don't want to do is have the policy decline. So hope that answers your question. And Jasmine, you said that's what you were talking about. Uh, is whole life. So, yep, there you go. Uh, I will say, Erica, as far as the annuity, um, typically, I, if you're doing annuities, I typically use those for younger people. I'm sorry, older people. Annuities are essentially a way to guarantee income in retirement. So the thing about an annuity is that it works like a retirement account, your 401k, things like that. So be mindful that if you take out an annuity, you cannot take the money out that you make on that until you're 59 and a half. So that may or may not work. I mean, they're usually good for older people. I would say, you know, for somebody so young, you might want to look at some different options, but depends on what type you're looking at. Um, so, yeah, I mean, people do buy annuities to supplement Social Security and 401k. But like I said, annuities, I would say, are for older people. So, Sister Madison, you said, what well, is a good life insurance policy for newborn uh, I mean, the thing with, uh, excuse me, buying policies for newborns is you have to determine what it is you want that money to do for you and the purpose behind it. Um, the one good thing about doing a policy for a newborn is that you will rarely have any issues getting the policy issued and it's going to be pretty cheap because it's a newborn. Now, I know a lot of the commercials say, you know, at so-and-so age, the policy will double and things like that. But you have to be able to calculate your rate of return over those years and determine uh, whether that's a good rate of return or not. For instance, you know, money doubling over whatever period sounds good. But if you break that down. Uh, over the years of where that money will double, it may not be a good return and you may be able to get higher returns elsewhere. So get, get, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what exactly would you want to do? Is it for their education? Is it for you just want to leave them some money? Is it that you just want to make sure they have a policy when they get older? Hopefully that answers your question. So Marquisha says, and if not, just throw it back in there and I'll, I'll go back. Mr. Thompson, thanks for hopping in. So Marquisha, you say whole life with cash value and long-term care is the best. So long-term care insurance is actually for if you need uh, assistance in like a nursing home or assisted living or things like that. For somebody so young, I don't think uh, long-term care sh is probably even on your radar. Um, you know, whole life with cash value, again, 
it all depends on what exactly are you looking for the policy to do for you. I am not one who really thinks one policy is better than the other. I know some people will tell you only buy life insurance for uh, only by term or only by whole life. I don't take either one of those philosophies. I think you have to sit down with somebody and really evaluate your individual situation and what you're looking for and what you will possibly need and uh, go from there. Usually for kids, I mean, a lot of people will tell you to buy whole life insurance, but you know, you have to calculate how much you're putting in, what's the projected amount you'll get at the end, and if it makes sense or not. And hopefully that answers your question. Or maybe you were just referring to term insurance. Let me know, and I'll come back to that. So, Sister Math Madison, so for their education, uh, what I would recommend is that you sit down with an advisor to determine what exactly amount are you trying to save for uh, your grandchild's education and to see what's the best way to get there. It may be that life insurance policy. It may not. You know, there are educational funds out there like 529 plans, uh, you know, through the state of Michigan. If you choose either one of their plans, which one is an investment account, the other one is a prepaid tuition plan. You do get deductions on your state of Michigan taxes up to a certain amount each year. So I would say um, you, you have to sit down and see exactly what the dollar amount you're trying to get to. So, Jasmine, let's see. What are some recommended companies to use for insurance? There are so many scams these days. Who are some insurance companies and trust with all that money? Okay, that's, a, that's actually a phenomenal question. So, um, you know, you, you can always go with your bigger name companies. You know, you have companies like um, Prudential, New York Life, State Farm, um, protective. You can go with AAA offers life insurance. One of the things that you uh, probably want to do is if you look to uh, websites like Consumer Affairs and also you can look at companies like JD Power and Associates and or just Google top ranked insurance companies. I will tell you that there's a lot of insurance companies out there that have been around for, you know, over 100 years that you may not have ever heard of. Doesn't mean they're not a good company, uh, but there are a couple things that you can look at. Uh, you can look at the company and see, you know, what are their ratings among consumers. You can see if there are any customer complaints. You can go to the company's website. Uh, you can look at their financial statements and you don't have to be a you know financial expert to see but their information that you would look at is you know how many premiums or excuse me how many policies do they have out there how much are those policies worth how much money does that insurance company keep in the cash reserve and things like that and sister Madison I, I see your number there um, I would say w without getting into exact details, it's hard to say exactly what. Uh, if you want, we can talk offline and uh, sit down and get a little bit more information and go through exactly. Because to get to that number is also going to depend on how much you are willing to contribute to it, uh, whether that's on a monthly basis or one time basis or so on. Let me know. Um, Jasmine, does that answer your question? And Marquis, I didn't see a response from you. Did did that answer your question? Yes, I have heard about Allianz. Um, I do 
business with Allianz. Allianz is a, from my opinion, and I'm not telling you to go go with it because I don't know exactly what you're being, uh, what's being recommended to you. But yeah, Allianz is a is a good company. They've been around for a long time. They have good credit ratings. Um, they manage a lot of policies and money. So yeah, Alli Allianz is a pretty good company. So Marquise, you said kind of, sort of. So so tell me. Because, you know, I just tried to answer based on what you gave me. I guess I should have waited for you to expound a little bit more on your question. So, Erica, what do I feel about Aflac? Uh, you know, to be honest, um, I haven't taken that close of a look at Aflac. Because Aflac, though I'm sure they offer life insurance, where I have seen them uh, be more popular is in things like uh, disability insurance and uh, accidental insurance and things like insurance if you get cancer. Uh, I've never really looked too much at their, their books or the company as a whole. But if you just remind me to, I will uh, take a look at them for you. So what else you guys got for me? Anthony Thompson. Man, that's why you my guy. I'm seeing you a star for that question. Yes. Um, which is something I probably should have mentioned now. To my people in different states, I, I can't uh, do anything for you as far as uh, policies, but yeah, so my company does do life insurance and we are a completely independent company. So we work with a bunch of different companies. We don't represent just one company, which if you're going to go out there and buy life insurance, that's probably what you want to search for as an independent advisor, uh, someone who works with different companies who is not bound to just represent one company because you may not be getting the most competitively priced policy. And uh, on top of that, you know, you just want to make sure that, you know, there are some companies that do offer life insurance and still have the option of buying it from other companies. So, yes, thank you for that. So let me go back to uh, Marquis. She says you talked to an older lady she talked about the benefit of whole life with cash value. So I wasn't sure if that was something I should look into. I mean, you know, there, uh, how can I say this? So whole life um, is something that some people swear by. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But I don't believe that, again, any one policy is better than the other. It just depends on individual needs. I mean, whole life, depending on the policy, how much you want, it can get pretty expensive. And I will tell you what I often find in dealing with people is that, you know, if you were with me on the opening seconds, is that only about 30% of people statistically have enough life insurance. And a lot of times people such as yourself will talk to somebody and they'll say, we'll get a uh, whole life. And because whole life is so expensive, a lot of people don't end up buying enough insurance. So though they may have permanent life insurance, um, it a lot of times it's not enough. So you have permanent insurance, but you're permanently underinsured, which uh, brings us into uh, another topic that we can quickly talk about is really... There is a systematic way when I'm dealing with clients that I typically will walk them through to look at how much life insurance they should be carrying. One of the things is first looking at what exactly are you buying the life insurance for? If it's for income replacement, you know, you can look at how much is that income and how long do you want it to be? If it's to pay off like a mortgage or something will happen to you. That's another thing. Um, but think about it like this. Let's say hypothetically it takes $2,000 to run your household. 
So at the end of the year, you spent $24,000. Now, if you have small children like I do, people are going to be dependent on you for probably the next 20 years. So if you take that $24,000 over 20 years, that's $480,000 right there that I probably should be carrying in life insurance. That's not counting if I have any debts. That's not counting uh, me now having the ability to no longer save for my children's education. Now, there's a couple other things that go along with calculating life insurance, and that's Social Security benefits that will be payable for children until they are 18. Uh, there's also, uh, if you have assets, whether it's cash or all those other things. So uh, that's why you want to sit down with an experienced insurance professional, because a lot of people are underinsured and they just don't know it. Lynette, thanks for joining so what else what else do you guys have for me? Hopefully it's quiet. I know my wife is uh, doing a great job of keeping the kids quiet. I, I asked her to uh, take them upstairs so hopefully I won't get BBC uh, this evening with kids busting in on us. So we're getting we have about... 10 minutes left, but I don't mind going over if anybody has any other questions. And if not, let's see. You're funny, Katila. Uh, yeah, I'm very, I'm very familiar with retirement. I was going to say, um, you know, we can kind of do a poll and see what some other topics you all want to uh, discuss. Uh, I'm willing to dig a little bit deeper into life insurance. And the reason I started with life insurance is because it's something very basic that most people know they need. And a lot of times we just don't buy it. And if you consider, you know, what we spend on a monthly basis, you know, if we were to die, what would our children get? You know, I recently did a policy for somebody in their 50s. It was $250,000. That was a term policy, but that's all they needed. But it was 20 something dollars a month. So think about it. You could easily support your family and provide for them and protect for them through life insurance. Uh, depending on what your health is and your age, I mean, you could be at a hundred bucks or less a month. If you consider it, that's a cell phone bills, that's cable bills, whatever it is. So you do want to make sure. And what I will do at the end is if anybody has any additional questions, I will leave all my contact information and feel free to reach out to me. You can send me an email. Uh, we can talk offline and kind of go from there. But yeah, Markeisha, I am very uh, familiar with retirement planning. Are you, uh, in particular, talking about like 401k stuff or what specifically about retirement? Yeah, Jasmine, I will, matter of fact, let me put that up now. Sorry, I'm using this iPad, so I know I'm probably looking crazy trying to tie it. My computer did not want to work. The keyboard does not work either, so I'm having a tough night here with technology, but we're going to get it squared away. So there is the, hopefully that link came through. It's uh, redwoodfn.com forward slash M Miller 
dot html and that is uh, my direct web page okay so Marquise you must work for a hospital school district something like that so 403b 401k terms are pretty synonymous just depends on who you work for so if there are any no other questions then we can go ahead and wrap up here so if there are any additional questions, feel free to drop them below. Like I said, send me an email. You can contact me through the website. And also let me know about some other topics you would want to hear about, whatever that may be, uh, whether it's, again, retirement planning, you want to know about mutual funds, or whatever it is. And if that's it, that's it. I'll see you guys later.